Mike Lindsley back with you here for an ML Sports Take brought to you by Stanley Law Offices and our good friends at Bowers & Company CPAs. Uh, you can't ask for much more here, Bonaventure uh, fans, alum, and, and everybody in between because uh, the Bonnies took care of business against Duquesne and it was crazy in the first half. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I mean, this team was up, you know, at one point, you know, double digits and then some and, and up 20 and up 24, but you had to look and say, wait just a second. Duquesne's going to make a run, right? Because they're too good. Um, you know, I mean, in the first quarter, uh, or in the first half, pardon me, I, the moment that I had, and I don't know where everybody else lies with this, but it, when it was 20 to three with 11.36 to go, I said, I was like, what am I watching here? And, you know, Duquesne started to slowly chip away. I mean, it was a 20-point game with 5.07 to go. Um, you know, it was still a 15-point game with, uh, you know, two minutes and change to go. Um, you know, Duquesne cut it to 13. They kind of kept working it down, working it down. And then, obviously, Venning made that layup uh, just uh, with about 30 seconds to go, um, you know, to go uh, to go back up by, uh, by, 12, uh, by 15 at that point. And then the that was the lead, obviously, uh, in the score uh, at half, 38-23. But you knew that Duquesne was going to kind of make that run because they're just a good team and they can make shots and they're well coached. And whenever that happens in basketball, no, wait, wait, college basketball is about runs, runs, runs. And you just knew that that was going to happen. Uh, Venning did score, though, and made it 40-23. to You said, well, maybe not. Maybe the Dukes can't get back in the game because that score held up until 17-01. And then, you know, the team just kind of went back and forth, back and forth. Daryl Banks the third making that three pointer. He loves the rally center, man. Um, you know, and, and then it was just kind of nip and tuck, nip and tuck for a little bit. And you know, Duquesne went on a run. They started charging. You know, Rozier made that three pointer. Uh, Bonnie's kind of had some offensive, uh, you know, uh, bad possessions. Uh, you know, turning the ball over. Um, you know, missed jumpers, and then it went the other way right away. Uh, and, and Duquesne kept chipping away, chipping away, and it got down to fifty nine fifty eight at one point, and then it got down to sixty one fifty four uh, in this game. But I. Still felt fairly uh, solid about things, um, you know, even as Duquesne was making that little run there. Once Bonaventure went up by about eight, um, you know, 64-56, and that lead kind of carried on uh, till about the, my goodness, that carried on forever until the 37-second mark. But really when they were up eight, going way back to uh, the Kyrell Luke made free throw. He made one and missed one with 2.10 to go. That was the moment there. Uh, eight, eight points up and, and then put the possessions back and forth. You're talking missed shots and, uh, you know, uh, turnovers and blocks and, and all these different things. The defenses of, of both teams were absolutely spectacular uh, until the end of the game. They just really clamped down and made it happen. But that's good news for the Bonnies because uh, they were already up eight. And by the time the, you know, the time, uh, you know, clicked off the, uh, clicked off the old timer there. Uh, St. Bonaventure was able to win this game. Few few big things in this game from where I sit. I mean, Bonaventure had a really nice balanced scoring. I've said it for a long time. When you get Luke, you don't get Banks. When you get Banks, you don't get Luke. When you get, you know, maybe Luke and Venning, you don't get Evans, Farrell, and Banks. Uh, and then maybe you're relying on Moses Flowers to go nuts with 20 points. They didn't need Moses Flowers to score 20. Uh, he still came in and was very productive. I like this kid a lot, man. 27 minutes, five points, that's it. But he had five rebounds. He got after it pretty good. The Bonnies uh, out-rebounded Duquesne by six. I thought they were really active on the glass. Uh, Bonaventure went eight for 20 from three, and Duquesne only went six for 22 from three. And if you read the pregame stuff with Mark Schmidt, he said, if we don't guard the three, we're dead. Well, they guarded the three. They were very good against the three. There were a couple here and there that they kind of let through the cracks, but mostly Bonaventure was awesome defending the three-point shot. Um, you know, and then they had four starters in double figures. I mean, you had 15 from Banks, 10 from Luke, 10, uh, 12 from Venning, 11 from Farrell. Uh, so that was pretty good stuff there. Banks didn't have a great shooting night, but uh, it was certainly enough. And, uh, you know, Bonaventure just uh, kind of... It was weird because it was the first half was a finesse half, led by offense, led by quick passing, led by three point shooting, led by the raucous RC, led by all these different things, and it just seemed like maybe it would be a one of those flamboyant, amazing offensive games uh, at the RC that we've seen in the past. Then in the second half, Bonaventure they didn't really get the offense cooking as much, and as I said before, college basketball is a game of runs. Uh, there's all sorts of things going on in this game in the second half.
half. Both teams are well coached. Both teams, uh, you know, made some adjustments here and there. And then it became a defensive game in the second half. And Bonaventure prevails 65 to 56. But a really good win. I mean, I, you know, a really good win at home. It was amazing to hear the students back. My God, is that place different when uh, the students are there? And now Bonaventure gets up over 500. And uh, we're getting into, you know, the latter half of January here. Big time stuff as we, uh, you know, kind of circle some games uh, in terms of the calendar here. Bonaventure is also 4-2 and two in the league now, and uh, now they have to go to Loyola Chicago. That's going to be a tough game this Saturday. You get Fordham at home, got to be a win there, at VCU, at Richmond, two really tough games. Dayton, LaSalle at home, Duquesne on the road, at Fordham, GW at home, at Davidson, St. Joe's at home, and at UMass. I think this team's probably going to be around where they are now. I think they're going to be around a 500 team, maybe a couple games over by the time the season ends, and it'll all be dictated upon if they can win tough games on the road. But as far as one night goes in the RC with the students back on a January night, this was exactly what the doctor ordered for St. Bonaventure basketball. Mike Lindsley here with you. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Both help tremendously. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike L Sports. And be sure, be sure, be sure to get me on Instagram, ML Sports Platter. On Facebook ML Sports Platter and download and subscribe to my podcast uh, available on Spotify, Apple, Google, you name it. It is called the ML Sports Platter. Past guests include Bonaventure journalism legends like Donna DeTota, Mike Vaccaro, Adrian Wojnarowski, and more. And of course, uh, past guests like Bob Casas, best-selling authors like Armin Katayan and uh, many others, Ian O'Connor, and of course, uh, Buffalo Bills greats as well uh, like Eric Wood, Jim Kelly, Lorenzo Alexander, and a heck of a lot more. So make sure you download, subscribe, rate, and review where you get podcasts on your smartphone device. Again, please like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Go Bonus, and as I always tell you, enjoy the games.